Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to, I'd say the latest edition of Office Hours, but as I've mentioned, it's also going to be the last one, at least for a little while. Uh, I'm not going to end Office Hours permanently. Uh, I certainly wouldn't say that, but uh, it's going to be on, on hold for a little bit as I focus on a few other projects, namely the Mental Game of Trading uh, and a, another book that I'm writing, which I'm uh, not quite ready to share what that's going to be yet. But uh, I welcome all of you. Thanks for joining me today. And uh, yeah, we're going to be talking about celebrating your wins today. Because look, it's the end of the year, and I think it's important to not overemphasize the bad, right? It's just very easy to allow the mistakes, the failures, the things that you didn't do this year that you had set out to do to start to overshadow uh, what you're going to do next year. And if you're going to be more accurate, uh, more successful next year, well, it's going to come on the heels of being able to uh, recognize the progress that you've made and the success that you've had. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, let's see who's here. Dr. Blueberry, uh, welcome to you. Tropical Trader, how is everyone doing there? Oh, glad to see you. Yeah, separate those Ws. Love it. Wild kind of follow up to you. Uh, and, uh, and Daryl, uh, no, the, uh, the new book is not going to be trading related. Uh, yeah, it's, it's so hard not to talk about it. <laughs> it's just, it's in my nature not to, to, to share. I, uh, I will, it's not too far off, uh, from where I can feel more comfortable mm -hmm. talking about it. But, um, yeah, as far as trading goes, I'm not going anywhere from the trading industry. I mean, I just launched the method of a trading live. So. Um, yeah, there's always just a lot going on from that standpoint. So yeah, I'm not going anywhere from a trading standpoint, but the new book is going to be somewhere else. But um, all right, Chris, hello to you, Bryce. Welcome, Sabomi. Uh, welcome to you, uh, Indrani, Flex, and Joe. Good, looking good, man. Is that, is that actually you? Get jacked. Uh, yeah, appreciate that. Thanks very much. Uh, Mike, <laughs> I can't leave this. I, I'm not like I'm not, it's not like I'm going anywhere. I'm just not hosting office hours. Uh, sign up to the newsletter. You'll get that regularly. I know you're you're on there. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm on Twitter. I'm on X. I'm not going anywhere. Just we're just gonna miss this time, which I I've gotten a lot of enjoyment out of uh, for sure. You know, this started. On the heels of launching the mental game of trading, I did like a book launch party, you know, on the day that it launched in April 2021. And it was fun. And and then 31 episodes later, you know, here we are having done this on a weekly, on a monthly basis. Um, it's been incredibly fun. Got to, you know, meet you and many of the others. And, you know, uh, it's been, been, it's been a, a lot of fun. Uh, so, yeah, it's just a little pause, right? Um, and like I said, I think. The Mental Game of Trading Live is taking up a lot of my my time, and um, so yeah, that's certainly where where you can find me too. If you don't want to, <laughs> if you want to say goodbye, uh, Moose, welcome to you. Uh, that's actually you, brother. All right, well, good good for you. Congrats, that's awesome. Um, Michael, uh, welcome to you. And I actually just saw that you joined the Mental Game of Trading Live right through the Trading Psychology Masterclass, right? Trader Wine kind of threw together. So if you are a member, if you are already an existing member and or part of the trading psychology masterclass for trader line they just put out the link right you can get a free one month trial to uh essential membership of the mental gamer trading line so christine welcome raleigh welcome daryl yeah there you go <laughs> what is that about all right well i'll sh i will show you very quickly there what what, the, what that is about uh debbie uh finding your book very helpful that's awesome um yeah, 31. I know. And so here's the thing. I, look, if you're on YouTube or you're not on YouTube, it doesn't matter, right? But there's a lot of content. I've answered a lot of questions in the 30 episodes up until this point on the Mythic of Trading, on the Mythic of Poker, golf, performance, psychology, all of it, right? So, you know, you're missing this. Just there's 30, well, soon to be 31 hours of content that you've got access to. Uh, so, uh, Anne Marie. Uh, welcome to you and you're welcome. Ernesto, game changing. 
<laughs> that's awesome. I do like a good pun. So that's great. Uh, and James, love your book. Thanks so much. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. So uh, yeah, I guess while we're on the subject of uh, just stuff here, um, let me just share with you all. Uh, for those that aren't familiar, Dara, right? This is this is the Mental Game of Trading Live. Uh, what I'm hosting here are, are weekly strategy sessions. They're similar to uh, office hours. Um, now, as an essential member, though, there's two membership tiers. As an essential member, you get to watch the recordings of these strategy sessions. This is the one that I re uh, recorded actually this past Tuesday, which is yesterday. My God, it's been <laughs> busy, busy few days. Um, and these are hour long. They're a bit more in depth, right? So premium members get to access it live. Uh, they get to submit worksheets and questions. And it becomes kind of like individual co coaching in a group environment where I'm giving a lot of one-on-one -on -one feedback. Uh, in fact, I actually had some one-on-one -on -one sessions, you know, five, 10 minute sessions in this strategy session. Um, so if you do want access to be able to have that kind of level of uh, feedback from me on what you're working on and building your real-time strategy or dissecting your issues, then uh, you're going to want to upgrade to the premium membership. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll share with you some of the details there. But the essential members do have access to this uh, weekly mailbag. Uh, so on a weekly basis, you can submit questions uh, and I answer them. And so you can see kind of the this range of, uh, of, of ones that have been answered already. And you know, we've been going uh, since uh, September. So there's, uh, or I guess October, there's a number of things have been answered. Uh, the other thing I'm, I'm very excited about is um, there is this uh, knowledge base. So all of these sections down here uh, go into great detail on uh, lots of different content, right? All aspects of my system, a lot of what you've gotten from the Trading Psychology Masterclass, just kind of chopped up a little bit. I think the Trading Psychology Masterclass is great if you want a very sequential uh, process for working through your issues. If you want something that's a bit more kind of choose your own adventure, um, you know, kind of that, that the, the, this knowledge base is going to do that. So for example, if you're new to the system, right, you can kind of come up on this page, uh, get some, you know, kind of quick advice. And then these are recordings of previous questions that have been asked. Uh, here's a coaching session, you know, get to kind of insight into kind of what, what that would look like. Um, and then, you know, if we kind of get a little bit deeper in here, let's say we'll go to the uh, mental hand history, right? So this is one of the big tools that I use. Here's some just kind of general content. Um, but then here are some, you know, video reviews of mental hand histories, just to give you a bit more uh, depth in terms of how to either solve a particular issue you're, you're having, if it's any one of these, and or better understand how to utilize this tool. Uh, and then, of course, you can kind of s s filter through any of the main uh, mental game problems and or areas of performance, which routines and goal setting is going to be an important one uh, as we look to uh, next year. You know, uh, here we go to like confidence and there's some content here as well, uh, profile reviews, mental hand histories, questions that have been answered. So that's basically kind of the platform, right? There's uh, a lot of opportunity to get feedback on your stuff. There's a lot of uh, content that you can access on an on-demand basis. And there's access to me on a more regular basis. Really kind of in my mind, the vision is kind of having me be part of your team. And, you know, office hours is kind of giving you a, maybe a, a taste or a flavor of what that's like, um, you know, once a month. But now we're just kind of just for traders and, uh, you know, accessing, uh, you know, really on a kind of daily, weekly basis, you know, kind of, like, you never know when things are going to kind of come up, but, you know, being able to kind of have access to me when things do, uh, I think is a, a great option. So um, if you want more information on it, um, just go to this page and, uh, and I am going to offer all of you a uh, couple of discount codes. Um, so this is the, the, uh, the sales page, uh, and you know, there's a bunch of, so I did a beta test over the summer, tons of great feedback, member testimonials. You can see again, I mean, you basically just saw the preview of the platform. Um, and if you just scroll down here, you'll see, uh, the big differences between the essential and the premium membership. And you can see, uh, the prices down below. Uh, all right. Uh, and actually I will say this too. Here's, uh, these are the upcoming strategy sessions in January. Uh, we're going to really be focusing on, so basically the way the strategy sessions work, uh, first anywhere between, you know, 10 to 30 minutes, depending on how much material has come in for me to review, uh, is spent really on a particular topic. And we're going to be really focusing on goals and making sure that the year is set off on the right trajectory. You know, I know that everybody doesn't 
you know, treat the calendar year as when they set their goals. But it always is a, is a, is a good time to reflect and make sure that you are solid on it because when there's some inconsistency or uh, there's some conflicts in your goals and you're kind of getting pulled apart or there's some expectations you have for trading and what you're trying to accomplish that aren't really uh, nailed down uh, or is clean, right? You want, we want your motivation to be as clear as possible because if it's not, then it will actually create uh, a whole host of other problems. Um, so yeah, January is going to be that, that kind of focus, but uh, you know, just to give you a flavor of, of what we've done, um, in recent strategy sessions, it's it can be a bit of a, a wide range of, of topics. So um, actually, I'll just scroll through this way. Uh, there you can see uh, the strategy sessions that were um, uh, being held ready. All right, everybody. Uh, but as far as today goes, all right, um, I really do want to focus on uh, the year. And I posted this blog. Actually, I'm going to stop this banner. Um, I posted this blog uh, last week, and to me, I wasn't trying to kind of throw cold water on uh, your year and how you felt about it. Uh, I wanted to ask a, a very poignant, I think, pointed question, a poignant, a very pointed question. You know, can you look at yourself in the mirror uh, and say that you've worked as hard as you needed to this year? You know, and I admitted fully that uh, at times I was not. You know, from a business standpoint, I feel like I did a really good job, but there's more to, for me that I, I want to accomplish. And, you know, that includes golf. And so uh, there were some times where I just wasn't being as diligent, as well prepared and as organized, organized as I needed to be. And then, yes, that would extend it at certain times uh, to my overall work. Um, and I am purposely being a bit harder on myself. I think objectively speaking, um, you know, I've done a great job this year, but I, we can always do better. But when you, when you kind of look at it from that frame of what can you do better? Um, I don't want to overemphasize the bad, right? We want to still be celebrating the wins. And so look at the outset, purposely trying to be a little bit harsh, but that we're, we're also having a, a good sort of overall, um, context here. So I actually would love for you all to um, uh, post in the chat, what have been your successes this year? What are you, what are you most proud of in terms of what you've accomplished? Uh, and yeah, because your successes, right? The, the wins that you've had this year, they provide the foundation for what you're gonna do next year. And I think that's where, you know, people kind of tend to get a little bit off in terms of the, the goal setting. They don't do a proper evaluation of what they've done in 2023. And even looking back at what their original goals were uh, at the start of the year. And frankly, when I looked at my goals, I, there were just too many of them. And for me in 2024, I've actually really tried to simplify things. It's frankly one of the reasons why I'm putting office hours on hold because I found that for me to be as effective as I need to be, I can't have my brain in just so many places every single day. It's just, it just becomes a bit too much. And I think that was one of the reasons why I was um, underperforming. So for me in particular, you know, that was a great lesson. That was, uh, you know, we could say in its own right, a win, right? Having had that realization, um, you know, some of the other big wins for me this year, certainly watching uh, the mental game of trading live. Um, I think I've, I've, you know, kind of, I feel like I've established myself uh, in the trading um, world more successfully this year. Uh, and, and also feel like I've kind of carved out a bit more of a niche. I think in my head, when I, when I released the mental game of, of trading, I really thought that there would be more sort of institutional interest in, in my work. Um, I've had, had done work with institutions before. Right. And, uh, but what I found is that there's a, a great need I think from many of you, right, from a, a retail independent trader standpoint for my work. And it's been phenomenal to be able to have that kind of connection um, and, and to really kind of kind of own where I think I fit best, uh, at least in the trading world. Now, uh, accomplishments from the poker side, um, you know, haven't ruined. <laughs> yeah, I, I was able to get the. Uh, my, my video series uh, over to learn WPT, which has been great. Um, frankly, from a, from a golf performance standpoint, 
Uh, I'm more functionally strong than I ever have been, been working my butt off in the gym with a phenomenal trainer, uh, which has been uh, incredible work. And yeah, I'm excited for 2024. But, you know, this year was in my head a setup year. And, uh, you know, I was able to level up, playing a lot better, understand my swing and uh, my game a lot better. But I have some clear weaknesses that I'm going to be working on for, for next year, too. So, um, yeah, let's see what... Uh, Let's come in here. So Raleigh, uh, discovering the psychological element of trading. All right. Well, that's it. That is certainly a huge win. Uh, so, um, exercising more patience and discipline, improve self-control. Fantastic. And yeah, so I, a question for you, Joe, is uh, was that a result of uh, building discipline? Or do you think it was more a, a byproduct of reducing some emotionality that was causing problems? Uh, oh, there's a question. Uh, we'd be planning on any books or coaching service for golfers. I'm not a golfer, but I know one who could benefit from a coach. So I actually already work with golfers. Uh, I've been working with them for, you know, actually where I started, right? Um, uh, yeah, I've, I've got, you know, a couple guys on the PGA tour, uh, you know, corn fairy tour, uh, and other, you know, amateur golfers that I work with. Um, so yeah, certainly, uh, they can, you can send them to my website, uh, jaredsendler.com. Uh, Ricardo, uh, I'm proud of seeing my subconscious programming slowly changing before I would be extremely mad, sad, emotional about my losses. Now they are less or resolved and I can focus on my bad habits. Phenomenal. Tropical trader. I've grown massively in both my psychological resilience and also my ability to read market context moment to moment. So that's, that's huge. We've got kind of mental and technical improvements there. Ernesto on the technical side, I've been able to hold winners much longer. Now, is that technical or is that mental, right? Is that maybe both, right? There are some uh, improvements on both sides. Something I struggled with for a long time. Awesome. Uh, Chris had my first five-figure month in November. Congrats, man. That's fantastic. Well, we've got Apollo. Uh, I'm so kind of a guy who has, who when it has a flat tire, says I have a flat tire, not my other three are still good, that attitude. Well, <laughs> the thing about that analogy, though, is, if you have a flat tire, the car is not really going to function very well. Um, but I, I mean, I certainly know where you're going, you know, kind of the more of the glass is half empty versus the glass, glass being half full. Um, I mean, I, I'm a, I'm a kind of a, like a more of an opportunist versus like a pessimist or like being kind of very positive or optimistic. Uh, I try to be very practical and, and um, you know, not get too ahead of myself um, and not get too down. So, yeah, I think if, if this is sort of your um, mode, there's nothing inherently wrong with that. So long as you still are recognizing uh, those improvements, right? It's okay to have a little bit of a sort of pessimistic negative slant in life. There's nothing inherently wrong with that, right? So long as uh, there is some balance that gets, to, gets there. Um, both. All right. Well, that's awesome. So both building strength and remove, removing emotion. 2023 wins, found Mental Game Trading book, uh, actually read it. <laughs> so it sounds like there's some others maybe getting getting some dust on your shelf. Realize my flaws are not technically based. Okay, interesting. Uh, I'm starting to adapt the strategy to improve my game and have noticed some definite improvements. Fantastic. Uh, all right, we got some more from our, uh, definitely improved by reducing some emotionality and trading, avoiding triggers improve self-talk, et cetera, but also improving discipline practice, such as studying and documenting all trades and carving out time to study each night when markets close. Yeah. I mean, you can't really level up unless you're putting the time in and whether that time means, you know, the kind of, uh, disciplined, uh, technical study or mental. Um, I think one of the big mistakes that people make, and maybe this is why the book sells so well is it's easy, you know, as uh, as Moose just said, uh, to buy the book, but then how many times do you not read the book? How many times do they sort of just collect dust? Or how many times do you just read a book, especially one like mine, where there's, you know, there's work you got to do there, and and just not do the work. I, I, I hear from it regularly. People say, you know, I've read the book, you know, but I'm still struggling with X, Y, and Z. And it's like, well, did you do the work? So... Joe, what you're saying, man, is that you're putting in the work, which is which is great. Um, Christine, uh, I'm much better identifying levels uh, price may engage with and determining where price is expected to go next uh, based on what just happened. 
Uh, now I need to work on trusting my analysis and my process, working my way through your book and thinking about uh, joining one of your programs. So uh, like working on uh, trusting the analysis and process, uh, sometimes that can come when, uh, or sometimes that is sort of slow to develop because your confidence is still maybe a little bit overly attached to the struggles that you had had before. Um, you know, so if here, here you're saying like, this is what you become much better at than when you weren't very good at this, you know, you probably were struggling and there probably was a bit of emotionality that built up and there may be a little bit of scar tissue from some bigger losses or some confusion or some pain there. And so, you know, now like kind of breaking through that barrier, uh, it can be a little bit tough when you still kind of have uh, a part of your mentality stuck in the past. So it's, it's to me a little bit less trust based and more knowledge based, right? The more you solidify the progress that you've made in your own mind, the trust becomes implicit. Now, if it doesn't, then that suggests that maybe working through a little bit of the scar tissue of the past can, um, can be part of what's, uh, what's holding you back. And, yeah, great. You're working through the book. And if you want to join one of the programs, by all means, happy to have you there. Bryce, uh, improving self-talk, getting less emotional, uh, and really slowly starting to understand my mental patterns and that the issues I have are purely mental. Swings in confidence uh, starting to flatline. Um, so it's great that you're improving. Um, the improving self-talk piece, uh, you know, what we want to kind of work towards is more that mental hand history process where you're digging deeper into the underlying causality of where that self-talk, where that noise in your mind would be overly critical, overly overthinking. There's some doubt and second guessing. There's some uh, doubt in yourself more on the confidence side, you know, that we can kind of dissect those uh, reactions, those, uh, those thoughts, et cetera. And, identify the underlying flaws that that's where you're going to start to kind of unlock the transformation where those triggers can be completely deactivated and yeah in situations where normally it would be uh it's not anymore and those swings in confidence naturally kind of um go apart dr blueberry i'm very very happy my mental game practices over the past year have taken me to a whole new state of mind uh, the self-talk is very positive and or constructive I learned i want to be great that is cool. Yeah. I mean, sometimes when we're really kind of blocked by the issues that were are present, it becomes harder to see more potential. Uh, you know, yeah, you're just kind of mired in the muck and things look bleak and dark. Uh, but you turn a corner, uh, this the things open up for you. And that that to me is the transformation. That's where the back end of that inchworm right truly steps forward. And all of a sudden, your mind can sort of see uh, elements of uh, your own potential that you couldn't see before. So congrats on that. It's awesome. Um, Chris is saying, yeah, reading the book is only a start. Exactly. Yeah, it's a start. And, and hopefully it will bring a lot of awareness. Hopefully it will bring a lot of uh, kind of process and tools and options for how you're going to do the work. But ultimately, you got to do the work, right? You, this isn't, uh, you, you can't, you can't. I'm sure our, our, our good friend here, uh, Flex and Joe, would attest. You can't get muscles from uh, reading a book, right? You, there's just no way other than getting in the gym and doing the work. And, you know, when I look at the transformation that my body has gone through, which, you know, I probably don't look any different to you all. But, uh, like, just functionally strong. I've just so many of these, like, little injuries and nicks that used to show up just don't anymore. And I'm getting older, but I'm you know, still swinging the club as fast as I was before. And I'm certainly, again, functionally stronger than I really ever have. And, you know, I, there's no way that I could have done that had I not gotten in the gym and woken up like today at 5.15 and gotten to the gym and did my work. Uh, so, yeah, that, that's it. You can read the book, learn a lot, but then you got to get in the gym. Uh, all right. Thanks for doing this, going through capture and actually reading the book, doing the work. Awesome. Love it. Uh, there it is. Amen. Got up at the time. <laughs> Definitely been studying a lot technically in the charts, but spent a lot of time during it as well. Love it. Uh, looks like a question here. And uh, yeah, so typical office hours today, right? You all can ask questions and we'll, I'll get to them. Um, and there are a few questions that came in advance, which I'll get to now. But Vlad, let's rock and roll. So uh, 
how should we begin to think about the problem reading your book, but it's very tough to find a way from where to begin. Can you explain them also the meaning of procrastination for a non, uh, I'm assuming non English speaker. Um, so, uh, okay. Like the reading that your book, um, uh, I, I mean, I think the way that I would do it, if you're not certain of where you're going to find yourself, um, you, there's sort of two things you could do. Uh, chapters four through eight describe the main problems that traders face. Greed, fear, anger, or tilt, as I call it, uh, tilt, uh, confidence, and discipline, right? Those are the main problems. If you're unsure which problems you're dealing with, you could very easily just kind of skim through those chapters and see what you find, see where you land, and just start there, okay? But then once you have some orientation to what you're dealing with, then I would zoom back out and go through the other uh, five chapters or four chapters, right? You know, one through three, and then chapter nine. Chapter 10 is like a troubleshooting chapter. Um, and that might give you a way of having a bit more of an anchor as you're learning about the system itself. Or you could do the opposite. Learn more about the system first, and then go through the problem chapters so that you're you're clear on what you're, what you're working on. Um, so procrastination is just the delaying of what you ought to do until you have to get it done. And so what happens is you delay, 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 delay. You create a ton of stress because it has to get done. It's like cramming for a test the night before. Ton of stress, right? And and you are either highly productive or uh, whatever. And then you just like, then it's over. And then you like the, 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 the pattern repeats again. Um, <laughs> it's a funny, a funny cartoon of... Uh, the writer's cleaning service. And basically what you have to do is give them a writing, a writing assignment, and then they're going to go clean your whole house. Okay. So that's, that's effectively procrastination, uh, right? Rather than doing what you're supposed to do, you're going to end up doing other things until you absolutely have to, and then you get a ton done and, and then just kind of rinse for people. Uh, is prior scar tissue the easy answer for why I short when things are going up? Um, maybe, I, I don't know that there is an easy answer. I wouldn't say that scar tissue would be the easy answer. Um, so if, okay, here's, here's kind of the marker for scar tissue slash trauma. Um, you need to have like something that is, has been, um, kind of stuck in your mind from the past. It typically is a particular memory. So with traders, it would tend to be, you know, uh, past trading mistakes, uh, particularly big ones. Uh, losses, blown accounts, uh, you know, things of that sort, or big missed opportunities. Um, so, and the, the marker for trauma is when you think back to those things, you re-experience, right, the old pain, anger, et cetera, that you felt then. Uh, not, oh, I remember feeling that way, but I don't feel anything now. Right. So when I work on this with a client, I'll have them just kind of focus for a few minutes, take some deep breaths and try to let their mind like sink back into the memory and try to re-experience it. And in that process, you'll get a little taste. Like sometimes all of a sudden there'll be a little nervousness in your stomach. Your heart rate will start to increase. Your mind will start to kind of race a little bit. There will be indications that what you experienced in the past is now happening again. Now, right. That re-experiencing of the past in a very sensory present oriented way uh, is a marker for trauma, which tells you, right, that the trauma is alive in you. And that's why it's so consequential and why it causes such significant overreactions to kind of present day experience. Uh, and oftentimes, right, it's, you know, why there's that disproportionate reaction, you know, I smaller versions of it would be called accumulated emotion, right, the emotion that kind of builds up day over day, the trauma would be you know, emotion that kind of builds up and just like kind of sits in the background, just like waiting to just blow up your day. Uh, speaking of your wins, how do you measure the successes of your trader coaching? How do you quantify the effects of your coaching? Okay, those are two different. So um, it's all dependent on my client's goals, right? When they fill out my new client questionnaire, which is the first thing they do before we even get started, I review it. We kind of are both preparing ourselves independently for that first session, but they're determining what they want, right? In terms of the outcomes in, in kind of practical terms and trading and how much they want to be making 
where they want to be trading at what size, et cetera. Uh, but also, you know, based off of like what problems they are attempting to solve. And so, you know, we quantify the effects of their coaching by either the absence of those problems or the realization of their goals or the realization of their own uh, improvement. And it's measured off of, or it's kind of validated, not by short-term outcomes, much like in trading, right? You can very easily kind of have a placebo effect where, you know, something I've said might work for a short period of time and then, or something they did works for a short period of time and then kind of falls back. So we're looking for evidence that the progress they've had is sustaining itself through a myriad of challenges and things that they faced before. So a great example would be, you know, a client that I was working on, working with recently had, would just kind of have extreme fun where they were continually in these discord groups, hearing about trades and sort of just struggling to avoid that. Now, on the one hand, they were decreasing their presence in those discord groups. So you'd say, okay, well, with less of an option to feel it, well, then you'd think that would be progress, but it's a sign of significant progress when they can go back in that group, you know, see what's going on and not have the trigger it's different than, you know, like kind of rationalizing to yourself and defending against those impulses and talking yourself through it. That's certainly part of the short term progress that can be made. But the real sort of transformation comes when you've actually healed and resolved those underlying root flaws. Right. In this case, it was uh, a, a perfectionistic piece, right? For them, missing out meant that they were imperfect. They weren't meeting their expectations. And that just like cut deep. Now understanding that they can feel really good and strong about what they've done. In fact, actually doing some of the, the accomplishment work, right? Some of what we're doing right now was helpful there. They can feel strong about what they've accomplished, what they've done in trading to date. And they don't need to get sucked into the ways in which others make money because they felt good and solid with how they make money. And so having that, and it's, I'm kind of oversimplifying the entire progress process, but the proof comes because you're now in a situation where those triggers normally would come and there's a continual uh, evidence that they can be there without having that, that reaction, that trigger. Uh, doing the work is a fun hobby now. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's, that's a, that feels like a big win for me. That feels like uh, that I've, I'm doing my job well. So thank you for that. And that's great to hear. Um, and it's obviously a big win for you too. I'm not taking credit for your wins, <laughs> but I'm just reveling in the overall uh, fact that you're uh, enjoying it so much. So that's, that's huge. Um, exactly. Did a lot of journaling and found out I was overanalyzing and overthinking. Uh, so I simplified my process a lot and found that I don't like uncertainty at all. So I'm working on that, which is fear. Yeah. So yeah, digging into more of what that uncertainty entails, right? Uh, and, and why it is so threatening is sort of the next step. You could do a mental hand history just on that, right? I don't like uncertainty at all. Why does it make sense that you don't? And there's your next step. Uh, all right, Black to Vlad, yeah, I'm at this point. I don't know where I am on the map after reading your book. Okay. So what I would say is maybe kind of like reorient yourself back to the specific trading mistakes that you're making. Cause this like mental game improvement, unless you are truly uh, just like wanting to better yourself, right? It's not really about trading per se. Uh, but if you're like, we want to have clear outcomes in trading that are improving. So I would look at your big mistakes, right? The big recurring mistakes that you're having in trading. And that becomes your starting point to then figure out which emotions, which problems are most often present at that time. And if it feels like it's like all of them, then work on confidence first. Um, that's going to maybe go a bit deeper. It might take you a little bit longer to make progress. But when your confidence is weakened, then it becomes easier for all the other issues to be weaker too. And, but the other way doesn't kind of work, right? So if you, so in other words, by strengthening your confidence, you will reduce some degree of intensity for the other problems, or at least check something off so that you can then go kind of systematically through them. But typically it doesn't work the other way around. Like if you make some improvement with fear per se, and you also have anger, that's not inherently going to necessarily improve your confidence. Although maybe it improves your confidence that you can solve problems, which, you know, is part of your overall competency. Uh, so yeah, I would say start with either the big mistakes you're making and or confidence if you're kind of going across the board. 
Uh, all right. Where are we at here? All right. I see a few more of the questions. I'm going to get to the other ones that have come in and then go back to the questions that came in in advance. All right, uh, coming across you have been a big game changer in my mental plan. I'm cultivating more patience, catching myself in moments, more awareness, injecting logic. It's been a lot. Thank you for your body work, Jared. You know, awesome. Love to hear. Thank you very much for sharing. Uh, Pete, do I think it can be subconscious? Okay, so this is back to the, the scar tissue question. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, do I have to think it or can it be subconscious? Um, Yes, it certainly can be subconscious, but if you do what I suggested in terms of trying to assess whether scar tissue is present or not, that is how you can draw something that is subconscious more to the forefront of your mind. Um, so yeah, I would, I suspect that if nothing comes up, then it probably isn't scar tissue and it may just be, you know, a more sort of normal flaw that needs to be dissected using the mental hand history. Uh, while trading the moment, specific memories are triggered, a cascade of biological process unfolds. These processes deeply embedded in our early pathways can uh, impact our decision making. Uh, can we control these emotions in real time? Uh, yes, but that's not the long term goal. All right. As I say in chapter one, out of the gate, controlling your emotions is really just a short term stopgap as you work towards long term resolution. And I have a very distinct bias in this regard. I want more for all of you. I don't like the idea that modern society and frankly, even a lot of, you know, like I will say like traditional psychology and, you know, stops at this, right? Uh, control can be overrun, right? Mental control can be overrun by your emotions. And so it's not really a long-term solution when that is sort of a danger that always lurks that you you know, are, could get overrun by them. You know, when you work towards resolution, you will permanently reduce the degree of volatility that you'll experience with your emotions. Now, it's not going to take them away. You need your emotions to perform for making decisions, for just having passion and motivation, right? You're, we are emotional beings, right? Some more or less than others. But emotions are not the problem here. Right. It's the underlying flaws, biases, wishes, illusions that contaminate our emotions that make us overly reactive in situations that ultimately impair our performance. So, like when you're talking about this, I mean, OK, if you're going to you're going to talk about it from a biological chemical process. Well, then you're talking about medication. Right. That's your primary mechanism for mediating this. Otherwise, we're talking about working through this in an active way to change your biological reactions, which can happen. And, you know, there are people here that are proof of that, as well as, you know, certainly many clients who I've worked with, um, one of which has proven it through a brain scan, which is kind of cool. This was going back years ago. I'd love to do more of that research to, to, to actually be able to validate the, the true neurological changes that can occur through uh, real resolution uh, versus uh, control. Because controlling your emotions is a prefrontal cortex process um, and it's, that has been validated in many, many studies, but I'd love to see the ability to kind of deactivate the necessity for that prefrontal cortex activation to control emotions and to see those triggers actually be, uh, be resolved. All right. Uh, you're welcome, Vlad. Uh, now never apologize for English. I'm, I'm, I don't know what country you're from, but I'm always grateful when uh, somebody who's not a native English speaker is able to speak any, because then that gives us a chance to actually have a conversation. So um, yeah, have a great holiday. Uh, option traders. I traded back with a lot of retail traders and worked well to fade the market. Um, maybe there's more here, Debbie. Ah, uh, I sometimes fall back into that mindset, even though it doesn't apply anymore, fall into those old, okay, now I agree with instead of paying attention to my model and technical educators. Okay. So now this is okay. So what this is, this is like, you are, are, uh, trying to trust a process, a strategy that probably has like, you know, this level of skill compared to this. Um, uh, I mean, my guess is there's. Uh, like a very distinct rewiring that needs to take place where you're kind of upgrading your entire skill set 
uh, or altering it. Uh, and, and that, that is a, um, like, well, I'll, I'll just give you some context here. Uh, different example, because I haven't truly worked with a ton of traders who have made, you know, kind of big shifts in their, their, their expertise. I have worked with some, in fact, one now who worked in the pits years ago, and then, you know, kind of bombed out, uh, couldn't trade online, uh, was convinced it was, was, uh, couldn't be profitable, and then came back into it 10 years later after having sold his company. Um, uh, and, and it's, it's challenging it, for sure. Challenging because you're fighting old impulses that are not flawed. They're just kind of outdated. You you're upgrading software. Uh, and, and so uh, Tiger Woods, just to give you another kind of perspective here, Tiger Woods in 2000, uh, one, three, 2003, this is after he was obviously the best in the world and had some of the most amazing results that anybody's ever seen, decided to change his, his golf swing again. Right. And he said that it took him two full years before he could bring that golf swing into major championships without having to think about it. So it kind of gives you just an idea of how long it took one of the best athletes in the world ever, best certainly one of the best golfers ever, to rewire his kind of muscle memory, motor programming so how long is it going to take you to make that transition? It's probably a bit longer than you expect. Uh, I made a new rule every day. I trade uh, every day. I trade. I use a forced mechanical daily loss limit. Uh, now, if I tilt, I will not go over the limit game changer. All right. I love it. Awesome. Uh, started off the year well, but lost track of my system and deviated from my plan. Chasing moves that weren't a part of my plan at the end of the year. Felt like one steps forward, two steps back. So anytime there's a step back here, um, you're falling into holes that were there before, right? It's, it's like a maze, you know, um, you took a wrong turn. Okay. Well now this was a wrong turn that you're not going to take again. Right. And solving for this, both in terms of why you deviated, why you lost track of the system. It's not just that you did and what you learned and having to kind of rework and rewire what you're doing. Practically, it's like, why did you lose track of the system? Like, there's there's some causality there, maybe from a mental emotional standpoint, uh, that is important to tease out as you dissect this and, and move forward again. Because you don't want to feel like you can take those steps back again. But it's that underlying impulse. And sometimes it can be a confidence thing, right? Lots of traders will jump around from different systems and strategies, et cetera. And it's because there's a lack of real conviction in themselves. Right? It's more maybe of a personal confidence or, uh, a, you know, related to like a fear of missing out that there are, isn't something better out there. Well, if you kind of have that working in the background, that at any point in time, right, you're going to make the same mistake again. That's why it's important to dissect and look for the causality of why things got thrown off in the first place, because it will help you to be more solid in the future going forward. All right. Uh, by all means, if you all have other questions uh, or things you want me to talk about, I will. Um, and let me just go through the questions that came in advance. Um, uh, this first one came out from Mike and, uh, just wanted to mention it, right? Sad office hours coming to an end. Words can't describe how helpful it was in spending an hour a month with you for Apple Grateful. Um, thank you very much for that, Mike. I really appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, certainly wish you well. Again, like I said at the outset, there's many ways to stay in touch. Make sure you're on my newsletter, get my monthly blog, find me on Twitter. And if you want more regular advice, then. The method of trading live is uh, where to find me. All right. Uh, how to break through your previous scar tissue, like from your previous failed trades that give you fear from trusting your trade setups that you see in your own chart now, Ryan. So for some of you who were just talking about this, let me give you a bit more of what you can do here. So like I said, first, we got to kind of find the scar tissue using the method I just mentioned. It's kind of this you know, almost like a meditation, right? Just like letting your mind really kind of settle and trying to reimagine uh, the past uh, mistakes, failures, whatever is kind of stuck. And this is a more kind of basic method for it, okay? Um, for some of you, it's important to actually like kind of articulate out loud what 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 is really painful, what, what, what you're kind of holding on to. Uh, I kind of liken it to like uncorking a bottle of wine. Sometimes it just needs to breathe, right? Sometimes these memories just get locked away because they're so painful. We don't want to experience that again. And we're very rapidly trying to recover and get out of it, but then we leave something behind. And all of these 
have something to learn. There's something for you to extract. Okay. So in your reflection, as you're kind of looking back to it, reorienting yourself, ask yourself, all right, what's the most painful part? Because typically that's where the learning is, is, is hiding. And so you try to figure out what the most painful part is. Say it out loud, write it down. Okay. And then, you know, just kind of ask yourself, like, why does it make sense that I'm holding on to this? Right. And try to write that down, articulate it out loud. If you don't, you, if you don't get anything, that's fine. Right. You can kind of just keep breathing, focusing on it, seeing if anything just kind of naturally comes up. And if not, put it aside, come back to it tomorrow, come back to it in a couple of days. Right. Sometimes it takes a little while for your mind to just start to understand that it's kind of okay to think about that because for a long time it was get the hell away i don't i want nothing to do with this and so once you start to begin kind of allowing that memory to come back into your mind uh, it can take a little bit to kind of start to access more more pieces of it so right said so, right, why does it make sense i'm holding on to it and then you know what flaws mistakes lessons learned what can i kind of extract from this you're trying to figure out where is there a flaw at the time was it yeah, like I was way too perfectionistic. I was way too hard on myself. I had this illusion of control. I was just crazily impatient and, you know, lacking confidence and, you know, was just a ticking time bomb waiting to blow up. And it just happened to be then. Uh, but I'm actually kind of glad that it happened then because, you know, the account was still small and relative scale. And uh, maybe it drove me. Actually, one, one client I talked about in the book, we talked about this, right, where <clears throat> it was... Uh, missing out on, you know, at that point, life-changing money that kind of drove him into the markets. And he was very happy with where he was. So in a way, he's like, well, sucks to miss out on, you know, 250K, but I've made up for that. And then some, uh, you know, as a result of that loss. So again, we're kind of trying to learn uh, and, and, and extract the lessons, the learnings, the understandings, the, the flaws that maybe still are, are active. And, you know, that scar tissue is kind of hiding and uh, preventing us from, from, from accessing. So that, that's a general idea. This is really from a performance standpoint, but if the scar tissue gets deep, sometimes it does kind of pigeonhole right into our personal lives. And sometimes all the way back into our childhood, right? I've had clients who were bullied as kids. And then, you know, when the market is fighting them, well, they're going to fight back because they, as kids couldn't fight back. And now here's their opportunity to seek some vengeance and some justice. I'm not saying that all revenge tilt is, is part of that. I'm just saying that sometimes when you dig all the way back, you find things that are still hanging around like our own dinosaurs, our own skeletons in the closet. And you might want to explore, you know, working with a therapist in that regard. All right. Last question that came in advance and I'll swing back to you all. Um, how do you know if a mental game problem, mental game problems are actually technical problems? Like how do, how do you come to that conclusion, uh, Mike? And I would say, the easiest way to identify it um, is how much technical knowledge do you have about the problem that you're experiencing? Because by and large, when it is a mental and emotional issue, that's sort of evidence of like C game. It's like, like this is stuff you know better than. It is clearly not for a lack of technical knowledge that you're making these mistakes. It's because your emotions are compelling you to violate your rules and violate your strategy and kind of blow up and prevent access from the technical knowledge that you have. So that's like kind of an easy way to conclude that it's a mental game problem. Okay. Now, if that is not the case, then it starts to get a little blurry, right? And by and large, if you are in your mind trading at a very, very high level for you, but you're running into technical issues or running into something that's off, I would say that that's probably likely more of a technical problem, right? So it's like C game is more mental and emotional. A game is where there's more technical opportunity. And then B game is like kind of the hybrid between the two. All right, let's see what questions. We got one more that's come in. Uh, any suggestion on how to consistently apply my stable mindset? Oh, sorry, there we go. Um, consistently apply my stable mindset after uh, sometimes of consistent execution and wins, I almost forget. I feel like I forget to stick to all that I did that brought the wins and unintentionally slide. So what do we think here, folks? Is it overconfidence? Um, you don't forget. This is not a memory thing, right? The overconfidence can be simply like an illusion of learning. 
right? You believe that you, you subconsciously believe that you don't need this anymore, that there's a, uh, a degree of mastery that's there. And it's like, wow, well, okay, well, I don't need to work that hard anymore. Got that licked. And in a way, it feels like you've crossed the finish line when you're still actually running the race, which is proven by the reoccurrence of those problems when your mind relaxes. So, you know, I would be just a, a bit more aggressive at sticking to this sort of uh, efforts that you're doing to have a stable mindset through many cycles of winning and losing and uh, market changes. I mean, at least give yourself a solid three months of consistent application before you pump the brakes and and then actively test say okay this week i'm not going to be as diligent with my work and i'm going to see as a test how much sticks and if i find immediately that it's like not as strong as i thought well then bring it back or retool because if you've been working that hard and it's not sticking as deeply then something might be a little bit off uh, but here you're kind of doing it randomly Right. And it's it's random, likely because there's some illusion that you have that you're farther along uh, than you actually are. Uh, what is your advice for beaten dog syndrome caused by uh, someone yelling at you and mad at you for your lack of progress? Uh, well, the question is, are you still, you know, kind of actively in that environment? Right. Because now you're talking about building some internal resilience. Uh, to defend against kind of active, uh, like an active beating, so to speak. Um, if that's not the case, then you're dealing more with a kind of a trauma scenario and scar tissue. Uh, and the things I've already mentioned can be helpful for that. Um, because in a way, you're having to kind of reorient yourself to a more safe environment, you know, much like a dog that's been taken out of a, you know, a, a difficult household and brought into a very loving environment. It's going to take some time to kind of reorient yourself or reorient uh, and, 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 but there also might be, you know, uh, you also might find, you know, working through that more aggressively in the way that I just mentioned, or with a therapist, uh, can be, can be helpful. But if it's active right now, uh, you're going to have to build some internal resilience to fight for what you believe, uh, in the face of, uh, we'll say inaccurate feedback, um, uh, and, and understand that in your own mind, what real progress looks like, because what they're seeing is clearly jaded from from what you're seeing. Uh, Becky, uh, can you believe we speak about the mental Game live program? Um, yeah, mental Game trading live program. Uh, sure, I'll bring this back up. I suppose it's a good time as we're uh, getting a little bit short on time here again. Um, let me close this. So yeah, this is the mental Game Tra trading live platform. Okay, um, this navigational toolbar down here is you know, where all the different areas of content exist. Okay. So, uh, you know, if you're new to the program uh, and you want kind of a quick uh, refresher on some important concepts, you know, they're all here. Uh, you want access to the worksheets that are going to help you uh, in your work. Those are all here. Uh, now the recent strategies, the strategy sessions are kind of the, uh, the bulk of what the program is very much like office hours. Right. But again, a bit more personalized because, uh, premium membership is capped at 100 uh, people, and so it's more of a curated kind of personal experience as I'm working with you over, you know, ideally at least a quarter and really getting to kind of know you. Uh, one of the, the other cool features is, um, maybe I'll just pull up uh, a random member here. Um, let's see who's here. Uh, Andrew. Yeah, so you can see, oh, he hasn't put too much here, but there's also this kind of bio section here, which is actually a lot of the questions that I use in my new client questionnaire. Um, and uh, basically what it does is kind of gives me a little bit more context. So as you're posting a question, uh, you know, in preparation of the strategy session, or I'm working with you in the strategy session, I've got a bit more context and can very easily access, you know, kind of the prior things that you posted there, et cetera. Or uh, if you're an essential member uh, and you posted something in the weekly mailbag, which is your primary way of getting access to me, uh, then I can also look in that and, you know, again, provide a little bit of context. So there's two membership tiers. If you're a member, you will not be able to see kind of the other membership tier. Uh, but essential membership, right, you get access to view the recent strategy sessions, right? You do not get access to join them live. But you do get access to the weekly mailbag. Uh, you get access to, you know, community discussion, these accountability challenges and accountability groups. If you want to 
feel if you feel a little bit isolated, uh, there are some members here who've already kind of joined at their own uh, accountability groups. And just I, I've just found that you know many traders oftentimes need um, a bit of uh, of support. Uh, and this is a way to do it. Now, if you're a premium member, you do get to join the strategy sessions live. Uh, here you can see the upcoming ones, uh, the last two of this year. Uh, these are the ones that are going to be occurring in January. Uh, and then here are the ones in February and in March. Uh, and so these are weekly, they five times a month, um, and then occasionally twice a week based on um, how the month's going. Uh, and then this is where all of the members' uh, questions and worksheets get posted. And then these last sections, as I mentioned before, are uh, all part of the uh, knowledge base where there's just kind of on-demand access to uh, prior content. Uh, and I'll show the banner again uh, with the discount code. So any of you who are uh, interested in signing up um, can use these codes uh, really at any point. The, these codes are not going to go away. Um, I know there was a, uh, a bigger discount uh, during uh, the month of November with 25% off uh, both tiers, but uh, this will be uh, be active for a while. So if you want to join, uh, by all means, and um, I'll just post the link on where you can sign up uh, in the chat, uh, which is here. Okay, so questions that I see kind of come in. And then we're going to say goodbye. Uh, all right. Uh, you know, can euphoria lead to overconfidence in my case? Because uh, I realize whenever I celebrate my wins shortly after I slide back off, and I have to uh, retake myself through a stable mindset that brought me consistency. Um, euphoria is driven by overconfidence, right? So you can celebrate your wins, but embedded in that celebration is some assumption about the future, which is driving the, the euphoria, right? There's a celebration that you've sort of solved it, like as if you've like finished running the race versus maybe like an acknowledgement that you passed, you know, mile marker 17. And you know, giving kind of an indication, like you will pat on the back, but all right, well, so I got nine miles to run, you know? And so there's a difference between celebration with some projection and assumptions of the future versus acknowledgement, confirmation of what you've done thus far and that you can feel good and proud about. But, you know, the marathon analogy is not a great one because here you've got like this sort of short time period, single day kind of, you know, event going on. And, uh, yeah, like having a lot of celebration or internal recognition in, in real time is not great. Like I want you kind of keeping your eye moving forward to, until you finish. But in this case, right, you can have daily feedback, daily recognition, um, but still in a very pragmatic, grounded way without getting ahead of yourself. Uh, do you ever go into the actual technicals of trading with your clients and how a trader's personality determines their approach in the markets and strategies they trade? No, I don't because my techno expertise is so broad in general that I can't really do that. I do understand the necessity to, you know, have your trading style, you know, kind of match your personality, right. To, to really find your fingerprint on the market. Um, but my expertise is just limited in that regard. So I, I don't at all. Uh, advice on consistent pattern of unforced errors after large wins. Maybe it was just what, what we just talked about. Um, you know, it, it's, it's very, very common. S overconfidence is a sneaky bastard. Uh, I would really look really closely at that, um, and, uh, and work through it. Um, all right, everybody. Um, uh, the nice one to end on, uh, tropical trader. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, man, it's, uh, it's been great. Um, you know, I guess, as I've mentioned, um, you know, there's a, there's a, a backlog of these suckers right here. We are still live now, but you know, 31 of these episodes, uh, that you can go back to at any point, uh, and reference, there's a lot of good content. And one of the things I'm going to be trying to do is, uh, chopping up, uh, some of the prior, uh, office hours and, and getting to some specific questions that can be kind of curated into this playlist, uh, and just, you know, it, it's not going to be aggressive, but I'm going to try to keep things, uh, keep things moving in that regard. Um, uh, yeah, uh, Chris, you're welcome, man. I appreciate you being here today and uh, happy, happy you're here and ID. Yeah. I will miss this too. I, I, I really have enjoyed it. It's, it's, um, yeah, I, this is not a happy goodbye for me. Um, so, but it is a goodbye. Um, and you know, sometimes in life we've got to make difficult choices and this was one of them, you know, 2024, at least would be certainly the first half. Uh, I think it'd be pretty premature for office hours to come back, um, before the end of the golf season. 
uh, this summer because I've got some big goals there. I've got some big goals with Mythical and Trading Live and with the other projects I've got going. So, um, yeah, I, I would say if it's going to come back, it'll come back in the fall. Uh, and so, yeah, sometimes in life we got to make hard choices, and this is one of them. Uh, and so until then, come find me elsewhere. I don't want to say goodbye. I hate saying goodbye. <laughs> you know, make sure you're on the newsletter, on my website, um, and elsewhere. And, uh, yeah, if you want to join the Mental Commission Training Live, I'd be happy to have you there and continue to work there. Um, and if not, I wish you all very well. Certainly wish good, uh, you know, good holiday, uh, good New Year's, and uh, do what you can to reflect on this year and make 2024 your best year ever, because that's certainly what I'm going to be working towards. And that's what I want for all of you as well. So, um, yeah. Uh, last question here, WIC, the discount code. Yeah, it's the code PM10 for premium membership and EM20 for the essential membership. So those are uh, the two discount codes there. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm just going to sign off with all these nice messages for all of you. So uh, appreciate this um, very much. Uh, give back to you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, awesome. All right, everybody. Uh, be well. Until next time, it won't be here on YouTube. It won't be here in, in office hours. It'll be elsewhere. And uh, I'll see you then. I'll be well.